Hey there, I'm Amira Hall, and I'm so delighted today to be coming to you with some information with my co-host and a longtime uh, friend that I really admire and have looked up to for her wisdom and her information. Today, we've got Mary with us, Mary Lamondo, and Mary is the president and founder of Pachatera Tours. She's also the founder of the Egyptian Blue Lotus Foundation. She's an Egyptologist. She's an amazing astrologer. How about that? And a metaphysical teacher, a writer. She's a, an incredible um, blogger. I know every, every other week, it seems like I get a, an email with Mary telling me what's going on. Um, she's a certified past life regressionist, the hypnotherapist, and she's a graduate of NYU psychology in the art history. She's got a wealth of information and also studied, got her Egyptology from the University of Cairo. Her areas of expertise, as I mentioned, are art and architecture and religion of ancient Egypt, especially the 18th dynasty. Uh, she's lived in Egypt. She owns a home in Luxor. She's going back so many times and, and digging and researching and experiencing, um, channeling, uh, studied with Indigenous shaman, and all of this dovetails with other archaeologists and her own journey. So I want to say that the first time Mary and I met was in 1998. That was when I made my first trip. And it's been, I think, 13 times now. This will be my upcoming 13th trip. And I'm losing count. But Mary, how many times? Welcome. And how many times have you been in Egypt now? Well, hi, Amira. Hi, everyone. And thank you for that wonderful um, introduction. Wow, it goes on and on. It makes me feel like, um, you know, yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> Egypt isn't just, um, I don't just go to Egypt. It's my passion. It's pretty much my entire adult life has been spent in and around Egypt. Um, I lost count with the numbers, but I've been there since 1991, um, back and forth. I went to school there. I lived there. Um, and then I came back to the United States. Um, I have a uh, life here in the United States, but I do go back and forth to Egypt at least twice a year. And so the passion about Egypt is real for me. It's, 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 a, it's not just a place, it's not just geography. It's actually, it's like a, a parallel reality to my life. <laughs> um, and I like to kind of ignite that and um, share that for other people. Because not everyone, you know, in a life needs to go to Egypt. Um, people are spiritual in so many different ways. There's so many different paths. But I find that the people who do go to Egypt, especially when they go with me or um, have, you know, some sort of resonance the same way when I first met you, Amira, return. You know, it's like not a one-time thing. It's like a soul calling. And so that becomes its own, its own thing, if you will. And um Yes, I've been other places. I've studied. Um, I went to Peru. There's a, a interesting correlation between the ancient Egypt and the uh, ancient civilizations that developed, um, not just in Mexico and Mayans, but especially in Peru with the Incas. There's so much that dovetails. It's uh, that's another whole conversation. Well, but I I first went to Peru the, before I went uh, to Egypt. Okay. So and yes, so yeah. I was literally spiritually guided from Peru to the next trip was Egypt. So I'm sure a lot of people are feeling that and realizing that by now anyway. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, but you know, I've also had people say to me, why would you go to Egypt so many times? I mean, the magic, the mystery, the feeling like you're at home, um, it, it resonated me and I have to emphasize that because I think that's an ongoing comment and commentary that I've heard from all the people that I've taken, you know, feeling exactly. like you're coming home. You're coming home and, and there's so many things, especially when we think of it in terms of frequency. It's like very few things in third dimensional reality feed that higher frequency, which we're talking about fifth and sixth dimensional light codes. Everyone now is very hip to the idea of the ascension and the light body. I mean, 20, 25 years ago, it wasn't a big vernacular, uh, you know, for that kind of thing to go on. But the idea of Egypt is this portal that you can walk through. Now, of course, there's other portals. There's other interdimensional vortices on this planet that are used for the same purposes to accelerate 
our codes, to accelerate our DNA, to heighten that light in the body and coming especially through the third eye and the brain and the heart. But Egypt's like putting your um, hand in a master, you know, battery. You, you just kind of, everybody says, oh, you look like you glow, you know, when, when they do the pictures. Everyone's glowing in their pictures mm -hmm. over there. Well, that's no accident. That's because the frequency is so high that when you walk into it and you have an open heart and you have an open mind and your chakras are ready to be moved into this new, let's call it light codes for lack of a better word there, um, you do glow because this is the true nature of our being. We are supposed to be glowing light. Yeah, beings. we're light after all, you know. So, yes, there. and why now? You know, why go to Egypt now? Yeah. Because What's the, yeah, as an astrologer, can you give us sort of an, a heads up on why is this so significant right now? Well, the astrology is significant, but, you know, just as a backdrop to that in general, as things in the third dimension start collapsing and getting more chaotic, which we see that in everyday life, nobody has to tell you how heavy things are out there. Mm -hmm. It's the spiritual work becomes more important. It's like we don't do less spiritual work because there's chaos out there, especially as teachers um, and light workers for many years, we do more spiritual work. And so going to Egypt now, as I said earlier, plugging into that battery, that hyperdimensional, interdimensional vortex, it's like not only does it make you stronger, but that accelerates the vibration on the planet. And so what we're doing, yes, of course, it's very um, I almost want to say selfish, you know, to keep going back to Egypt over and over again, but the, because it helps me personally, but also what it's helping is to lift that frequency on planet earth. Mm -hmm. And so as we're in, in the astrology of it right now, especially this week is really important as a preamble to what's going to go on as well, because we're looking at major Jupiter Neptune conjunction in the mm -hmm. sign of Pisces, which is all about this flow of compassion and living your dream. And what is it that the hope, what is it that you really wanna accomplish in your life on earth? And so let's say for instance, um, people all ha always have wanted to go to Egypt. Well, now is the time in a way, because not only are you amping up your own frequency, but you're working with the light codes of the planet as well. And, and I, I, I- Sorry, I heard someone oh. say that whatever's going on with Jupiter and, um, what was it? Jupiter and Jupiter, Neptune, and Pisces. In, in, in Pisces. That's this doesn't happen every year. This is like once every hundred and some years, right? Well, the last time it was conjunct in Pisces was in 1856. So, you know, that was very much the beginning of the industrial age, uh, you know, on the worldwide platform. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at now is what's the next level of this? So there's many different ways. I'm mm -hmm. always looking at it on the spiritual level. What's it about? It's about compassion. It's about opening the heart. And last November, um, the Divine Union Heart of Egypt Tour Part One, basically, um, we could call it Part One, was there for the November eclipse, November 18th. And there was private time inside the Great Pyramid. So that was your last trip that you're talking yeah. about now. It wasn't my last trip, but it was the trip. Oh, I mean, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it was the November trip in 2021. And so that was, we, I designed that trip to be inside the Great Pyramid and have private time at the eclipse, the full moon eclipse on November 18th. That was a full moon eclipse in the sign of Taurus, which I'll talk about in a minute. But the part two of that is November 7th to 8th, 2022, because we also have a lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus. So what we're looking at is we've had a full year to work with this energy. It's like a window opened, okay? The, these eclipses and the signs of Taurus and Scorpio. It's all about, Taurus is all about the heart. It's about getting in touch with the earth. And it's all about how we work with our physical natures. It's like holding light in the body in Taurus is very important. It's also- and still being grounded. It's staying grounded. Present. The Hathors, it's a lot of healing energy. I work specifically with Hathor energy when we're over there at this point in time. Um, all the goddesses are present. You see them all behind me. Um, and we yeah. work with Sekhmet, Hathor, Nephthys, Ma'at. But the idea of the Taurus eclipse is all about Hathor, and especially in terms of rebirthing and resurrection. Because what we're doing is when we go into the queen's chamber, we rebirth in the womb of Isis. And then we make the ascension up to the king's chamber and that's grounding that new birth 
into our physical bodies. So those codes come in through sound. That's why a lot of people, when they go into the king's chamber, they like to do toning and chanting and different kinds of sound work. Esoterically, um, we need to embody that into, into the physical frame. As we embody it into our physicalness, as we leave and go into our own lives after we leave Egypt, it's like our bodies become these human acupuncture needles. Like all that's encoded in us. And then you take it into your life, wherever you are, whatever work you do with your family, your friends, your spouse, all of, you know, people who can't go to Egypt, they're, they're getting that resonance from you. So it's very important work. It's also this work of like, let's say we're talking about ley lines and how the grid of the mm -hmm. new earth, all of those things that people talk about with new age consciousness, it, the, the eclipse itself is like a, like a portal opening. And the Great Pyramid is ground zero for interdimensional work. It's like whether you're talking about the Pleiadians, you're talking about Sirius, we're talking about Arcturus. There's a lot of star codes because that's how, when it was first put on this planet Earth, it was encoded so that humans at certain points in time would be able to access that. It's like having an ATM card, right? Not everybody can use your ATM card. You have to have the code for it. You have to have the magic number for it. Well, as you grow and evolve right now, your ATM card is actually being able to access all of this. Egypt is there for the, for the ones who, the initiates who have the eyes to see, the ears to hear, your perception is open. If you go in, you're, you know, if you're a person who's fearful, closed down, you know, you, everything's hopeless, it's, it's not really going to resonate for you the same way that it's going to resonate for someone who really has an open heart. And as I said, wants to go in there and realize, what's the dream? What's the dream for me? What's the dream for planet Earth? What is this new Earth all about? What is this age of Aquarius? And how do we do that? We don't just get from point A to point B. Right. We learn things the hard way. It wasn't just this mass ascension that everybody was, you know, going to happen all at once. It's like each individual is doing their own work. And that's what this trip is. It's the opening of the heart, the divine union between masculine and feminine within, so that you can then resonate open to the new frequency and birth that in yourself. And so this is part two. It's not a conclusion. Right. It's just a furthering of the energy that began in last November. And every single time I've been in the Great Pyramid and doing the King's Chamber ceremony that we're talking about right now, I've felt a shift, a massive shift. I've had incredible downloads. And I remember one of the first times I was there and I never did any reading or back background you know study on on the significance of it but i i channeled that it was a transformer it was an, a generator and it literally amplifies your energy as you said like being a portal it, and whether it's just energetic frequency or whether we're actually you know a, a actual energetic portal to leave the planet but it was significant and i just say that you know, I, I wasn't someone who, who memorized or knew innately all of what was going on, but man, oh man, you feel it and you will be different. And I love what you said, Mary, about you carrying this new vibration with you. And I call it a ripple effect that we take it out into the world, right? So it's this grounded version of ourself, a new higher level, uh, perhaps of our own spiritual understanding embodied in human form exactly so and powerful it, and that that expansion you know i like to think of it also as a, like an expanded level as it, as, i mean yes it's higher in a sense that we're moving out of third dimension into something that people call fifth and sixth but it's an expansion of consciousness it's like if your brain got bigger you know not in terms of facts and materials and you know left brain stuff but the sense that that pineal and pituitary gland gets enlarged every single time you go into the Great Pyramid. Well, you can hold more energy, right? So it's like, yeah, yeah it's it makes perfect thing. sense. It's a physical thing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you can, you know, document this where that that pineal that needs a certain um, amount and it's not, you know, the way people get the, the sad SAD effect where they need light. Well, if we're talking about we don't 
only have a physical body, although the physical body is really, really important right now. We have um, subtle bodies and the ancient Egyptians taught that we had seven bodies. And so the body that gets fed the most inside the king's chamber is the Ka body, the Ba body. It's like the bodies that are the ones that are closest to spirit. So what happens is you're bringing in your high self and that high self where it gets, um, let's say the actual uh, integration goes on is in your pineal. And so as you're working with the pineal gland and it expands and takes on more light, um, not just physical light, but this idea of where the light emanates from the real significance of those light codes where they're coming in from interdimensional uh, beings and whatever the netters of Egyptian, um, the pantheon of how that was all put in place, it's it works. And so when we go in there, it's almost like the automatic process of it is that your body's in there and it will start to feel and accept. The way that it's not automatic is not everybody wants to do it. Not everybody's prepared for it. It's like sometimes it takes years to get ready to just go to Egypt physically mm -hmm. and then to be there. Um, the initiates, it took years and years for them to graduate to be able to do this process of what we do in the Great Pyramid. And so this, this um, our, and this particular trip, our initiation in the King's Chamber and at the Sphinx, the Sphinx is also very important comes at the end of the trip so that we've had time to build up and we'll be going through all the temples of Egypt. The, the grid work of Egypt is very special in the sense that each temple is aligned to a particular star frequency, to a particular way that um, the initiates work with that energy. And I'll be talking about that, you know, as we, as we move through the trip. But the idea is that the pinnacle, when you get to the Sphinx, it's about your heart chakra and your throat chakra. So you've gone, you've got, we'll go into the uh, king's chamber first, into the great pyramid, so that these light codes become part of you. And then as we move to the Sphinx and do our meditation, our private time there, it's integrating it so that you can speak your truth. You know, you know who you are in your heart. You're living your authentic self. And then what does that mean in terms of your expression, your throat chakra? It's like a lot of people, um, you know, they're, they're kind of confused about what they really need to do or what their real truth is or what or they, who they are, or who they are. This is, this is a time where you're able to plug in because you can access that higher self mm -hmm. much more. Um, I don't want to say easy because nothing's actually easy when you're on the initiatic mm -hmm. path, but it's more accessible to you. Mm -hmm. And when you're just stuck in 3d, you know, going to work and coming home and, you know, taking care of, you know, whatever duties you have in your everyday life. It's like Egypt clears the deck for you, mm -hmm. that there is nothing else that you need to do except be this initiate. And this talk about a reset, right? <laughs> this pristine state so that you can, um, it's almost like walk a new path. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to come back. Work for me. <laughs> <laughs> It definitely you know, took me on another path. Right. You're still going to be you. You're still going to have your family and your friends and, and you know, all of that stuff. Mary, your volume went down. I don't know what happened with your microphone, but it went real low. Okay. Um, there I we go. I think if you move a little closer, it's good. No, what it is, is I hit the button on my, on my remote. Oh, um, okay. So, so all of this is, you know, if you've been ready, wanting to go to Egypt and you've been saying, well, you know, I'm waiting for this, you know, certain things to be over, COVID to be over, easier to travel. The idea is not only now are some of those things making it physically easier to travel, but the idea is that the stargates, if you will, have become very um, accessible right now. There is a window, especially at the end of this year, starting from the first eclipse comes uh, there's midway eclipses, April 30th and May 16th. We're starting the year of eclipses this spring. And so we're finishing up the cycle on October and November of 2022, the Scorpio Taurus cycle. And so this is about being grounded, embodied, and taking this frequency, holding it, holding it in your body, and then being able to work with it so that it expresses positively in your life. So 
that's, you know, kind of like the why do you want to go? Well, everyone has their own reasons, but in case you needed a reason, those are pretty good ones. I yeah, think. yeah. And I would say, too, that, you know, the things that we've got planned on our itinerary, although many of them are common, there, we've got a lot of incredibly private opportunities set up that an average trip to Egypt wouldn't include. And so I really want to emphasize that because Mary and I are spending an awful lot of time and care into keeping you safe and in, in, a, in a place that supports this activation and you being able to hold on to this new light or these codes for yourself. And I think that's really, really vital and important. Exactly. Because you wouldn't, you don't, you know, I don't believe in suffering when you travel. So if you travel... <laughs> Especially when you're going through spiritual enlightenment and growth periods, you need exactly. to, the body, the body needs to feel safe. You're, um, it, it's like you're holding a lot of energy. And yeah. so it's new energy, plus just the culture shock, if you've not been there before, being yeah. in a different country. So I want you to be as comfortable as possible. That means the best hotels that we can, um, you know, have you be in. Uh, very, very good company, safe company. There, you know, I have a very good record in Egypt in terms of people don't really, um, they don't get sick, you know, they don't, they don't, they don't suffer, you know, they're, they're usually pretty, pretty um, overjoyed at the yeah. accommodations. And again, the tour, there's only like with any metaphysical tour, there's only so many places, you know, that a tour sets up. But then in the midst of that, in the midst of the temples and no, there, you know, very few people do private time, mm -hmm. but the idea of working in the temples and actually, again, having that idea of the ATM card to access what that temple is all about. Um, you know, you can go in there as a normal tourist and love it. You know, you take pictures, you, you see the beautiful paintings and wall reliefs and sculptures and all of the things that makes Egypt, um, Egypt, mm -hmm. but then knowing how to read energy and really working with it is another whole dimension. It, it, it gives you like, again, not just 3D Egypt, but this idea of going into the parallel reality of Egypt that exists there. And, and it really does exist. <laughs> it really is not a slight of words or an exaggeration. It's in incredible. People, you know, tell me that they're looking, you know, at a temple wall, but but you know something opens up, and they're not there anymore. They're mm -hmm. they're in a crystal palace, or they're mm -hmm. in Atlantis, or they're in. It's like whatever. Again, you bring you bring to the table whoever you are. So wherever you have past lives, whatever you're connected to, actually comes to fruition there, because that's the point of being in a geographic place. You can study about Egypt. You can meditate. You can really understand the um, mechanics of of the spirituality of Egypt. A lot of people do, they just do their, their spiritual work uh, without having to go to Egypt. But the thing is when you're actually in place there and you are in the energy, it's again, it's like this parallel reality opens up and the more tuned in you are to that, um, the more intuitive you are, the more psychic you are, it opens up even more. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be psychic to go there, however, when you, Sometimes you think you're not psychic and all of a sudden you're in Egypt and it's like, wow, Mary, you know, I'm feeling this. Wow, Amira, I saw that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mary. So what Amira and I do on, on this trip is like, we're there for you as spiritual midwives. So whatever you may be uh, going through or whatever new experiences you may be having, you have a support system there mm -hmm. that if you're just going with a regular tour or, you know, the Egyptian guides who, you know, know their, uh, you know, Egyptology, but th they're not geared to take care of you spiritually. Nor do they understand much of what you're going to talk about in terms of interdimensional or, or visions or opening of your third eye, et cetera, et cetera, you know, creating balance. So I did find that before, but, you know, when you're on a trip like this and you are expanding in, in your light body, it's wonderful to have like-minded folks with you that mm -hmm. we can share about these things because it might not even come from Mary or myself. It could be from another traveler that experiences exactly. something. So we have this open space that's safe to even share and explore. 
And usually, um, usually on the trip that I do, you know, you know most, you know, a lot, most you're, of the time there's women. And also, um, it's a lot of people who do healing work. Mm-hmm. So they're there for each other as well. Um, and it, you become a family. Mm-hmm. It really becomes a spiritual family. And I've had people, um, even like Amira and I, who have stayed friends for years. After 24 this. years. Yeah. <laughs> so they've gone to Egypt. Exactly. So yeah. it is an experience and it's the experience that it's, it's the gift that keeps on giving, you know, it just, there's always something new to learn. There's always something different to see. And in this particular uh, end of November, um, there, there's lots of new museums that are opening up uh, that we may have the grand museum open at that time. Nobody's sure yet, but there are other really good places to see. There's new venues new um, restaurants I mean just in terms of creature comfort there's a lot yeah. of stuff to do well and I'm so excited because we're going to have an exclusive VIP brunch right at the base of the pyramids where we have that view I don't know how close this new restaurant is but I've never been there because it's brand new right and so after we have our spiritual connections and expansion and all of that really incredible uh, experiences we're going to have brunch outside the pyramids with a view and I don't think there's any place else in Egypt that will have this nor do any normal trips do this this is like completely brand new and off the charts Mary thanks for making that happen it's really exciting okay, you're welcome. yeah the, yeah it wasn't open uh, I just came back I was in Egypt uh, March and I came back at the beginning of April it was not yet, uh, you weren't able to do it yet. So yeah. we're, you know, we're going to be able to, to go in there. And I, and I think it's, you know, there's always these neat little things. I mean, there's always a new shop to find or, you know, people. And, and one of the things that's great about Egypt is it's, it's not just the spiritual level of things that we enjoy. Mm-hmm. There's so many, um, like people, you know, they love to meet Egyptians and see the, the local culture mm-hmm. and, and to, to sample the foods and the different things and just just the the sights and sounds and you know it's just it's a very colorful um country and so we get it's noisy i'll say that much for it but once you get used to that um there's just always something that catches your attention and it's what i would like to say it's impossible to take a bad photograph in Egypt I mean it's like so- <laughs> I don't know I had some windy days where I was kind of but yeah you you know when you're glowing and you're just high as a kite because it is a trip of a lifetime you know and and knowing that that you're stepping into that version of yourself maybe that you haven't accessed yet it's so exciting yeah <laughs> So we're going to, you know, there's a lot of little details. I'm sure that whoever's listening to this will have questions that want to go more in depth. Um, And we're going to have a special Zoom call um, for those people that want to have more details and specifics. Mary, before we go, is there anything else that you wanted to share regarding the importance or significance of our time and why going to Egypt is, is critical at this time? Well, I don't like to use the word critical, so I don't, I'm not going to say that it's critical. I'm going to okay. say that it's one of the times where if you've ever been feeling like you wanted to go, it, this is, you know, logistically, it's a good time to go. It's not, it's, uh, you know, astrologically, you know, we talked about all of that in terms of why with the eclipses, it's interesting to go now because the doors are open for you. The, the, mm-hmm. the window of opportunity in terms of accessing the higher dimensions is, is there for you. Not that it's never going to happen again, but this idea of create your dream now, work with the energy that's going on right now in your life and bring this, manifest this in for yourself. I do astrology readings. Um, I work with people with the new moons and the full moons. All of that I'm available for to work with you before you go to Egypt, which is really important if anyone's interested in doing that kind of work. So um, if you've joined us now and you're still and you're really curious about the extra details or the final details, go ahead and click the link if you'd like to know more about this trip. We're going to be sending a link and invite you to a private interested persons only Zoom call with Mary and myself and where we will explain more specifics, more details for you. And following that, if you would like to complete our registration and you will also have a private call with Mary 
and even maybe me. Um, so that we will then solidify all the details. So thanks so much for joining us here today. Mary, thank you so much for all your wisdom and sharing all of what you do, all of the special details that we have. And I'll talk to you real soon. Thank you, Amira. Bye. Thank you. Talk Bye. to you all soon.